So let's start this. So you'll look directly at the camera. Okay. Um, and let's just start at the beginning and where it is. Um, how did this project kind of start? Like, what was the initial idea? So I was talking to marketing and we realized that 343 really needs a costume um, here at the studio to use for Make-A-Wish visits, to use for um, Microsoft events, to use for 343 specific events. Uh, and we had most of our old costumes were either in disrepair or they were on mannequins in our Halo Museum. So we realized we really needed to make something new. Um, and we reached out to Phil Schinner at uh, I don't know how to say his company. Is it Eva Kura? My name is Phil Schinner, and I'm the owner of Eva Kura Armor, and I'm from Woodby Island, Washington. We are based about 35 miles north of Seattle. It's a 20-minute ferry, and on the island, once you get there, you go back about 30 or 40 years in time. But it's a slower pace of life there. The 405th is our amazing cosplay community for Halo. Lucky enough that here in the Seattle area, we have a very large and active contingent of people in the 405th. They make all different kinds of suits. Phil Schinner's part of that community, and he had made an amazing Master Chief costume, and that's kind of how we knew about him. One of the reasons why I built the Halo 4 Master Chief out of EVA foam was because I had dreams and desires to one day build a suit for a game company. And if I had my choice, it would have been 343 Industries. And my dream came true. We realized when we took on this project that we would definitely need to upgrade the shop substantially. So I immediately went out and purchased 3D printers, uh, supplies for the build itself, which would be silicone and urethane plastics, dyes, tints, mold release, all these different things like that. Then from that point, once we gathered all these parts together and all these tools, we were then ready to start working on the project itself. This is Project Mjolnir. So the Master Chief wears a suit of powered assault armor that in Halo we call Mjolnir from Project Mjolnir. So Mjolnir is the, the overall project name for all of the powered assault armor suits. Uh, it's the equivalent of a walking tank. We've often made a distinction between some of the older and newer suits, whereas the Chief and the other Spartan Twos have kind of an M1 Abrams tank style of armor. It's much more bulky. It's much more uh, resilient to direct damage. And then you have the suits that you see worn by the Spartan Fours, such as Locke, who it's, we've often compared to an F-22 fighter. The Chief's armor and all the other Mjolnir armors uh, consist of multiple parts. On the um, inner part, they have a, what we call a tech suit. A tech suit we decided was going to be made out of dragon skin rubber uh, to get as close to the uh, in-game screenshots and, and video footage that they have. Dragon skin came up as an option, and it was really important to us because it, it was not latex. It would hold up better. Um, it wouldn't be an allergen uh, or something that we could bring into hospitals if we ever wanted to go visit uh, fans there. Also, something that would be really robust and hold up much better than foam or latex. During the mold process for the tech suit, uh, it's really easy for air bubbles and stuff to get in there, and that can really mess up your, your molds and how they work and how they look. And so there's a really cool way to combat that, and it's called a vacuum chamber. And so what it does is it sucks out all the atmosphere out of a certain area. And uh, it makes the, the air that would be in the, the bubbles, and it makes them ginormous to the point where they all float up to the top of the batch and get sucked out through the vacuum. And that's how we get rid of air bubbles. So the, uh, the, the tech suit, which is the undersuit that's worn underneath the Mjolnir armor, is in and of itself is a very complicated piece of technology in, in the fiction and that it is an exoskeleton. It has what we, we call a gel layer, uh, which is our kind of all-purpose uh, protective material inside the suit that can absorb shocks and impacts and also provide ballistic protection. It also has power packs, and it's light enough to be worn by Spartan when they're not actually having a, a fusion reactor strapped to their back. Have you calculated the hours you think that uh, the suit is gonna be in total? No, <laughs> we have not. We're afraid to. Yeah, so like on average, what, 12, 13 hour days? This last two weeks has been 15 hour days? Yeah. yeah. And that's just myself. That doesn't include anybody else I've had helping too. So there's been an incredible amount of help with this. 
My part really came into play with the hard armor, what was on the outside of the tech suit. So in Halo 5, the tech suit has various arming points around the suit to which titanium A plates are attached. And these plates can have other systems built into those plates as well and other sensors. And that also includes the fusion generator, which is on their back. Um, and then they also have shield generators and then shield wave guides that allow them to have uh, protection against uh, alien weapon fire. For the armor pieces, it was the process of printing out those, those parts and then cleaning that up. <laughs> Sanding, 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 sanding. I'm gonna say sanding one more time because that's how much it is. Preparing the surface to as closely match the end result that you can get. And then making a mold of that part. After a final cast comes out of the mold, what you need to do is take off the flashing, sand some blemish areas if you have any. And then really after that, it's straight to primer, straight to paint. We did a technique on the Chief build that is called faux latex chipping. And basically you have the primer coat of paint and then you do a chrome coat of paint. It was painstaking, but it was also really cool because you know at the very end you take a step back and you're seeing real paint chips when most people just take some silver paint or silver sharpie and just color the edges so it gives a really cool 3d effect so the mjolnir helmet is probably the most expensive and advanced component of the entire ensemble because the helmet contains the visor sensor array has a communications uplink built into it, air filtration, it has built-in lighting systems for dark environments, it has a um, high-capacity computer that can load, in some cases, a smart AI. The helmet consists basically of the visor, which we had outsourced. What I did with the fans is there's two fans in here we have one <clears throat> the very top up here, which vents the fresh air from back here, the slit we've made. And that blows down the front of the visor here. And then we have the other fan right here, which will push uh, fresh air in front where the person's breathing. But that is ducted all the way through here. And that will use these vents right here. So these vents are actually used we also added in the, uh, the lights, um, which there are four of. And then in addition to that, we also put in a wireless communication package. There, is, there has not been a single day since the start of this build that I've not worked on the suit, at least some, a couple hours. Uh, and that's seven and a half months, so <laughs> a, lot of, a lot of time. a major privilege. Since the day one when Phil asked me for help, it was it was all hell yes and just full inertia and just it was all emotion. The first time we got through all the fittings and I actually saw Chief uh, at a Microsoft store for a Make-A-Wish event, um, it was just amazing. Just the sheer amount of craftsmanship and artistry that went into crafting the suit to make it as accurate as possible to what you see in the actual game uh, was extremely impressive. This suit, we've never made anything like it. Not a lot of other people have made anything like it. Like seeing how good it looked in person and seeing all the detail that Phil had captured was just really amazing. Do you like your job? I love my job. I wouldn't trade it for anything. <laughs>